Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am really good, Brian. We got the big races coming up on the Kentucky Derby Trail. We've got the Florida Derby and the Arkansas Derby, two million dollar races. Absolutely, Matt. Two big ones this week three big ones next week uh, it's going to be fun to see how these last major kentucky derby preps shake out without further ado Matt, let's jump right in let's start over in arkansas because there's a story developing here it's a nice story we got the octogenarian the legendary trainer d wayne lucas uh that a, a trainer that's won derby preps in fact he's won a kentucky derby before with a philly but he's won Kentucky Derby preps before. It's been years, but uh, Phillies like Althea and Serena Song and, of course, Winning Colors won major preps for him. Now he's got Secret Oath all these years later. D. Wayne Lucas still going strong into his 80s. And Secret Oath, Matt, looks like a serious threat here to beat the boys in the Arkansas Derby. Hey, that's for sure, Brian. He might be 84 and he might be moving around a little bit slowly, but I'll tell you what, uh, Mr. Lucas is still sharp as a tack because I tell you what, he's he's found a he's found a, in my opinion, he's found an ideal spot to take a shot with his Philly uh, secret oath. Uh, and she's no slouch in here also. Her uh, her last few races have been really good. Those two stake wins have been uh, uh, so impressive with that really speedy turn of foot down the stretch to win by uh, a big margin in each of those races. And now Lucas, you know, he's looking ahead and seeing what kind of field is expected in the Arkansas Derby. And I'll be frank, it's not the toughest Arkansas Derby that we've seen in many years. So he's taken a really good shot. He's found a really good spot to take a chance with Secret Oath. Yeah, the Arkansas Derby map for a while there, it was looking like one of the best preps. Last year, frankly, was weak. I think this year's uh, Arkansas Derby field certainly is better than last year's Arkansas Derby, but it is not one of the strongest preps out there. Uh, having said that, I, I probably like it more than a lot of people because I have Secret Oath up at or near the top of my rankings list. I like the Philly that much, but there are a lot of interesting horses in here, but none that are that proven. And given that the male prep, I think, was uh, shown up a little bit by Secret Oath's performance in the Honey Bee, Matt, uh, you'd have to say, yeah, D. Wayne Lucas did find a good spot for his Philly Secret Oath to run here it, it, against males for the first time. Um, she showed promise as a uh, as a two-year-old Philly in Kentucky last fall, but the three races at Oaklawn Park uh, uh, since she's gotten down to Arkansas, Matt, have just been scintillating. Uh, this one, I guess we picked it up a little bit too late, but uh, she had a little bit of traffic trouble. She waited, she got the rail, and then she just exploded. She's got a really nice running style, Matt. Um, she can be close to the lead or she can be kind of mid-pack, but she's got that turn of foot. And in a race without any superstars, I think that turn of foot is likely to be telling in this Arkansas Derby. Yeah, Brian, it's it's hard for me to find any reason to put a knock on uh, Secret Oath in here. And, uh, you know, if I was looking at replays and I was looking at past performances and, and if I didn't know that Secret Oath was a filly, um, I, I think likely she would be my top pick uh, uh, in the race anyway. Yeah, she's the uh, morning line favorite, five to two there on the morning line, Matt. And uh, I, I think we agree that she is deserving of that spot. After that, it's a little bit of hodgepodge. Uh, it looks like we the people, I think we the people, both my morning line and the track morning line has we the people as the second choice. And he's been quite impressive uh, winning his starts. He's only had two. He got uh, off to a late start. He's trained, of course, by Rudolph Brissett, the son of Constitution, has looked good in two wins over the track at Oakland Park. Yeah, and again, I mean, I can say the same thing that I said about uh, for Secret Oath going into this field. Uh, we the people has found a good field 
uh, in which to make that step up from allowance company into the Kentucky Derby trail into a big grade one, into one of these 100 point races. This is a field that is not particularly distinguished. There's only a few horses in the race who ha even have any kind of stakes win to their credit. And we, the people, a son of constitution trained by uh, Rudolph Brissett, that former uh, Bill Mott assistant um, looks like a three-year-old that is an up and comer. Yeah, absolutely. He looks like an up and comer. He looks like a talented horse. I've, I've seen a lot of people talking that, that he ran faster than not only both the Rebel, but also the uh, 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 Honeybee that Secret Oath won. But you got to remember, that's a different week, a different track surface. So I wouldn't put too much into that. Regardless, We the People has looked very good in his first two starts. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this in the Florida Derby as well. It's tough to come from only two spots and to win a grade one race. None of these horses uh, other than Un Ojo, I believe, have been nine furlongs before. So we're all going to have to see. Certainly Secret Oath looks like a filly who could get nine furlongs. I think We the People looks like a talented horse who's got good tactical speed and probably in my eyes, yeah, I think the morning line is correct. He might have the best shot to upset the filly in the Arkansas Derby, Matt. Looking at the rest of the field a little bit, uh, you know, we haven't even gotten to the Rebel Horses yet, and I'm going to stay away from the Rebel Horses a little bit uh, to start with. Uh, Doppelganger, uh, of course, the famous barn change from Baffert to Tim Yachtin, a former assistant of Bob Baffert, as, uh, as a few horses went to uh, Yachtin recently to see if they can get derby points. Doppelganger has not been as good as Forbidden Kingdom in either his second or third race of his career, but... A lot of people think Forbidden Kingdom might be the most talented three-year-old in the country, so maybe Doppelganger gets an easier spot here in the Arkansas Derby. Yeah, could be. We'll see about that, Brian, uh, um, and, and how that plays out on both sides. If if Doppelganger runs well, it's certainly going to be uh, a, a flattering for 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 Forbidden Kingdom. Of course, Doppelganger was second, uh, uh, you know, a good bit behind Forbidden Kingdom in the San Felipe uh, last time. Um, you know, I don't know how much the barn change will uh, uh, make a difference in here. We will certainly uh, will certainly find that out with uh, with Doppelganger. But now he is finally eligible. He gave up, I think, twenty points last time uh, that he could have earned. Um, in that San Felipe. Yeah, it, it may be more uh, powerful than the barn change. Maybe not, but maybe more so is, is Johnny V jumping aboard here for the Arkansas Derby. Doppelganger was not in the neighborhood of Forbidden Kingdom, certainly early in those last two races. Uh, Forbidden Kingdom, of course, is very, very fast. So we'll see. I would expect Johnny V and, and a new uh, racing surface and a new bunch of uh, contenders, Doppelganger might show a little bit more speed in here. But to be uh, truthful, he really was not, uh, you know, I don't know what the final margin of that San Felipe was, maybe five and a half or something. Uh, it wasn't that close because Forbidden Kingdom absolutely beat him for fun there. Uh, another one that wasn't in the Rebel. Uh, again, we're staying away from the Rebel for now, the major prep for the Arkansas Derby, Cyber Knife. Cyberknife has been a horse that they said he had some learning to do. And in his first grade at stakes appearance, he did not do all that much, frankly, in the Risen Star. But he came back with a very nice allowance win in his last time for trainer Brad Cox. Yeah, and and being and coming from the barn of Brad Cox, that means he's certainly going to get maybe in this case more than his share of attention at the betting windows, as Brad Cox uh, horses uh, often uh, often do. He was, uh, I agree, a, a, a disappointing, non-threatening sixth in the Lecomte. Uh, got some time off for Brad Cox to 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 train him and he had a nice uh, allowance win in his last start. I don't know if it was as good as the allow recent allowance victory by, by we, the people that we were talking about. Yeah. I kind of like we, the people's win uh, even a little bit better. The horse that ran second to cyber knife last time uh, did not do anything in the Louisiana Derby. Finally, we can talk about the rebel Matt after we went through four major contenders here for the Arkansas Derby. Uh, the Rebel was a race that probably doesn't get a lot of respect. It was won by a 75-to-1 shot, 
and uh, the final time was not uh, nearly as good as Secret Oath ran the same mm -hmm. afternoon in winning the Honeybee. But regardless, there were some horses finishing pretty well in the Revel Stakes, uh, what, about five weeks ago. Yeah, and if we want to start with the winner, Unoho, um, uh, the New York bred, uh, who won the Rebel, got a good, you know, a good stalking trip, found some space along the inside to come through and get the win at 75 to 1. And typically, Brian, over the years when we've had these big long shot winners on the Derby Trail, they 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 usually do not back up that victory the next time but an interesting thing about unoho was the uh, in his race before the rebel he was second in the withers and you might say oh second in the withers what's great about that but he was second in the withers behind early voting who um has got a lot of attention for that performance uh, people agree that it was one of the best runnings of the Withers in a long time. So uh, he has, in my eyes, Unoho, put together two good performances in a row. Can he run well again in here in this spot? Again, I'm, I'm still not sure. Yeah, and I think he'll be disrespected to a point. Uh, six to one, I believe, on the morning line, Matt, and... Um... You know, looking back, hindsight is twenty twenty. It's easy for me to say this now. Yeah, I should have said it before the Rebel, but I can't understand why he was seven, 75 to 1 looking at his past performances because yeah. I see a, a son of Lao Ban. I know he's a New York bred. I know he ran some New York bred races, but a son of Lao Ban who is getting better and better. And if you look at the Withers, sure, early voting was clearly best that day, but Unaho was really running down the stretch at Aqueduct in the nine furlong withers and again i think he's the only horse in this race who's been nine furlongs before i think that's a good sign uh he's got that win over the track now yeah the rail opened up for a little bit but he he was the one finishing really well there along with barbara road who was third so uh you know i i think Una Ho is a horse i can use uh in this spot as who knows maybe the sixth choice maybe he's nine ten to one again or, or quite a bit lower than last time, but still very good odds. So Unho is interesting. Barber Road is the other one coming out of the race that that, that did some running in there. Uh, Barber Road has been kind of knocking on the doors, running all of these preps at uh, at uh, Oaklawn Park. And the Santa Race Day, trained by John Ortiz, uh, keeps finishing well, keeps uh, getting a, a big chunk of the purse without winning. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Brian. He ran in all three of the Kentucky Derby points race preps at Oaklawn Park, picking up a second in the Smarty Jones, a second in the Southwest, and then a third uh, in the Rebel. All, all three times, relatively close at the finish. Uh, nice horse, picking up a lot of purse money. Already got a nice, uh, a nice number of Kentucky Derby points. Another one of those. Uh, uh, finishes in the top three or four uh could get him into the derby field yeah yeah he likes to finish well i i don't know if he likes to win yet but he likes to finish well uh a, a pretty consistent horse who certainly uh, we would not talk you out of it putting in your exotics unho and barbara road look like the two most likely to come from a little farther back in the pack um of the others coming out of the rebel ben diesel you know he's been beaten by Barbara Road every time. Um, chasing time was disappointing last time in the Rebel. Maybe he can bounce back a little bit. Kavad might be the most interesting of the other Rebel horses. He's got speed. He's got the rail. He's kind of hung on pretty well in the last two preps at Oakland Park. But on the other hand, he was fourth both times. He gets blinkers off this time. I, I still expect him on the lead, but he would be a long shot that I know some people like. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's true. Blinkers off on Kavad, so we'll see what happens on the rail. So you got to figure that they're going to uh, send him out there again. Yeah, and I, I think horses, maybe it's uh, Cyber Knife, maybe it's We the People, maybe it's even the Philly, will be um, asking of him a little bit earlier, maybe, than he's been asked in some of these other preps as he stretches out to nine furlongs. All right, Matt, it's time. Let's talk Arkansas Derby picks here. Uh, I know you're waiting to give me something spectacular in the Arkansas Derby. Hey, Brian, nothing spectacular. I, I have been so impressed with the Philly with Secret Oath. And like I said uh, it, it, at the beginning, I think uh, 
Lucas has found a ideal spot, a relatively undistinguished field, in my opinion. And if she can keep running the way she has been, I think uh, we'll have an exciting finish and exciting things to talk about uh, after she wins the Arkansas Derby. Which way will Lucas go, to the Oaks or to the Derby? You said it, my friend. Uh, if, if she runs back to what she's already been doing at this track, I think she wins the Arkansas Derby. Send a Philly to the Kentucky Derby. If she wins the Arkansas Derby, Matt, I will be pretty shocked if she doesn't run in the Kentucky Derby. That's not D. Wayne Lucas style to, uh, to duck the boys in the Kentucky Derby. I like her best here, too. I will use her with... Uh, 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 we the people who I think has a ton of potential, and also Unoho, who I think is still uh, undervalued, and I think nine furlongs uh, suits him well. The Ricky Corville uh, trained New York bred with one eye. I think he will be ignored, as I said, pretty well at the windows again. So I'm going to use Secret Oath with We the People and Unoho in the Arkansas Derby. Matt, we have probably a even better field, certainly a bigger field, but an even better field also nine furlongs also seven figures it's the florida derby at gulfstream park this signature race at gulfstream park matt um it's a nice field it, it's hard to say who's going to be the favorite for sure my guess is that uh between four horses uh that will get bet a ton simplification classic causeway white abario and charge it Simplification is probably the right one to be made the morning line favorite. Simplification probably will be the Florida Derby favorite. I've been, and like you said, I think that it is going to be hard, and those four will get all take a good bit of bad betting action. But that is because you know we've got a fairly distinguished field in the Florida Derby. We're talking about. Uh, uh, three horses who are coming into the race with a Derby Trail victory in their last starts. We're talking about three horses who have won, between them, have won all of the Florida Kentucky Derby points races. That's uh, Classic Causeway winning two of them, Simplification and White Abario, each winning one of them at Gulfstream Park. Of course, Classic Causeway winning the pair at uh, Tampa Bay in the uh, Sam F. Davis and the Tampa Derby. Um, impressive resumes coming in as they look to win that 100-point uh, race, that coveted 100-point race, which so often has been an indicator of success in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, uh, three times since the point system started, the winner of the Florida Derby has gone on to win the Kentucky Derby. I think they were Orb, um, Nyquist, and Always Dreaming. Yeah, that's a great point. The uh, Florida Derby has certainly been as key at Kentucky Derby prep in recent years as any, Matt. And I think if you go over the history of the Florida Derby, that, that still oh, stands up. Okay. It, it's cyclical where it comes in and out a little bit, but the Florida Derby has had a great history of producing Kentucky Derby winners, and it's had a great recent history, as uh, Matt just pointed out to you. Let's get to simplification, Matt, because you said he's won one of the major preps, but I'll, I'll say he's won uh, two preps here for the Florida Derby because he was also an easy winner of the Mucho Macho Man. Uh, I believe that was uh, over the, uh, the holidays, Matt. So simplification looked good here winning the Fountain of Youth, of course, last time. But uh, if not for a very poor break a bad start i guess his head was turned the other way and he didn't jump out of the gate uh two starts ago in the holy bowl he could be coming in on a three race uh stakes race winning streak at gulfstream park over the track he can do it from different places early on in the race very versatile where he can be close where he can be on or he can be pretty far back as he was forced to do in the holy bowl having said that he never really got close to white abario in that holly ball but uh, simplification certainly has been the most consistently good three-year-old at gulfstream park so far this year yeah that's for sure uh, and that that mucho macho man was on uh, january 1st and 
certainly uh, caught everybody's attention because he did that on the he did that on the front end. But but I like the way he's been running in his last couple starts, coming from off the pace. Uh, veteran trainer Antonio Sano uh, uh, knows how to 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 get the best from a horse and keep them running. Uh, um, uh, simplification is one of this uh, group of intriguing prospects uh, in the Florida Derby. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in fact, he was sprinting early and Sano was saying this horse wants a distance. If I put the wrong race up, there we go. Let's get back to the Florida Derby. Um, yeah, even when he was sprinting and he won one of those by, I think, 16 lengths, Matt, uh, as Sano was saying, this is a horse who wants a distance. And, and it looks like he's been proven right. Even in the Fountain of Youth, that win where he swept wide and won going away, uh, he had some traffic trouble on the backstretch. So a really good performance. It makes me think, especially since it's over the track, that he is the horse to beat in here. I think maybe the other horse that you could argue would be the horse to beat is a horse you talked about a little bit already, and that would be a classic Causeway, a son of Giants Causeway. Always been well liked uh, since he won uh, his uh, maiden, his debut at Saratoga last summer. He he tried good races, big graded stakes races as a two year old. He didn't win them, but he ran well with less than ideal trips. Uh, he's looked awfully good at Tampa Bay Downs, but the question now, Matt, is were those fields good enough to expect him to come in here now to Gulfstream, the cross state and beat the best in the Florida Derby? Yeah, he's certainly stepping up and facing a tougher field uh, uh, in the Florida Derby because, hey, let's face it, this is one of the toughest fields uh, on the Derby trail that we've seen thus far. And, and at Tampa, in both of those races, he was able to get out of the gate smartly, get to the lead fairly easily, take control of the race out, uh, out in the front, face very little pace pressure, and draw off to win. It sure seems like, Brian, uh, um, and you always have to say that about when you're predicting the pace, but it sure seems like with the quality of this Florida Derby field and some of the, the contenders in there that he's going to face more pace pressure in there. And let's face it, uh, you know, he's got lots of points accumulated already. He doesn't necessarily need to win again in here. Um, you know, I think Brian Lynch was 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 at a at a point of do I try and train up from the Tampa Derby to the Kentucky Derby? Uh, and I think he's probably smartly decided to get another race in and choosing the Florida Derby gives him a relatively longer amount of time after the Florida Derby heading into the Kentucky Derby than if he waited to go, for instance, uh, next weekend in uh, in the bluegrass. But uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I, I'm not saying that I expect Classic Causeway to run badly in here. He could easily run another really good race. Yeah, I, I will take contention to, to just just one of your statements there. I agree with most of what you said, but the Tampa Bay Derby, I, th I think it was a pretty easy pace. He was allowed to control the race, and then uh, he, he turned it on when he needed to at the head of the stretch to pull away. But in the Sam F. Davis, uh, he was pretty much going head and head. Maybe maybe it wasn't uh, uh, as tough competition as we'll see Saturday, and maybe it wasn't in super fast fractions, but he was head and head for a lot of that race, and that, that impressed me because – you go head head on the lead, and, and then you show how strong you are at the head of the stretch. That that shows me something about how good uh, uh, or how classy a horse class to Causeway is. But yeah, there should be some pace pressure. Some of that pace pressure could come from one of the other favorites. I don't think it will come from simplification, as you said. Who looks better as a horse who who can come from behind a little bit now? Both Charge It and Way to Barrio have natural speed. I, I don't know if they have classic causeway kind of speed, but both of them could go out. Let's talk about White Abari a little bit first, Matt. Um, he's almost a little bit forgotten because it's been eight weeks since he impressively won the Holy Bull over the track, which came over good horses, which came over Simplification and Modonigal. Maybe both of those late runners had a little bit of an excuse that day, but White Abari did it very easily. In fact, he's three for three over the track. His only loss came when he was away from uh, Gulfstream Park and came in a very good race when he was third uh, behind uh, Smile Happy and Classic Causeway in the Tough Kentucky Jockey Club last fall. He didn't have a great trip that day, 
what's not to like about way to barrio maybe a horse for course at Gulfstream park yeah and and a horse for course a trainer for the for the course also uh way to barrio trained by uh uh safi joseph jr who who does really good things at Gulfstream Park and at other places, but at his home base, he is uh, is very tough. Um, it seems like uh, after the Holy Bull that you know the Florida Derby became the goal of uh, of White Abario. Um, recently, he uh, apparently had a, spiked a little bit of a fever and, and it altered plans, and but. Uh, during this week, uh, uh, Safi uh, blew uh, a white barrio out with a three four fur long breeze, a, a fast three fur long breeze. That and and that's what those kind of moves are about. But often that is an indicator of a horse that is going to show speed in uh, his next start, and and typically that is the style that uh, Safi Joseph prefers. Yeah, a little bit old school. We used to see that all the time with the big horses whether they were speed horses or not blowing out three furlongs in uh in the week of the race so i, I kind of like that move it shows me that wabario is ready for this florida derby yeah a, a little a little bit of space between races that's not old, old school but that's the way it is these days and usually horses seem to respond to eight weeks might be the perfect way to come up to this florida derby and like i said three times at Gulf park he has not been threatened at all in those three races, winning them impressively. Charge it's going to get a lot of money, Matt, and so much so that maybe he's even bet below White of Barrio, maybe even bet below Classic Causeway in here. Charge it, a well-bred son of Tappet, trained by Todd Pletcher, of course, who's had a lot of Florida Derby success over the years. Uh, he's only run in two maiden races. Both were good because the first one was with a stakes place horse or a future stakes place horse, uh, and he just missed, and they were about 12 lengths ahead of the rest of the field. And then he came back and won for fun at one to five by more than eight lengths in a fast maiden race last time, Matt. But I ask you, even when we the people, we the people at least ran a maiden and allowance race. Charge is running in his Florida Derby, nine furlongs, grade one, with only two maiden starts. Can Charge it be a real threat in here off that little experience? I don't know, Brian. <laughs> it is a very tough field, as we're mentioning. He's not stepping up into a soft field uh, um i think uh todd pletcher admitted i heard him say you know hey this is a tough step up we'll see what happens um yeah and and talk about breeding brian with charge it tap it out of i'll take charge who uh herself uh is the daughter of the blue hen mayor take charge lady who amongst others was the sire of will take charge uh um the 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 dam I'll take charge at, at some some point sold for two point two million dollars herself. So regally bred for sure. They're taking a shot, and you know if she runs well, okay. If not, I'm sure they'll have their eyes on some prizes later on down the road. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it, I'm going to answer my own question because I I think he kind of answered mine, but I'm going to answer it a little more directly. The answer is yes, he can compete in here. He's looked that good in his first two races. Todd Pletcher often does well with lightly raced horses, but here's the big but for me. Uh, no no pun intended to my uh, to my current pant size, Matt. Um, yes, he can contend. He he's talented and he's well bred and he's in the right barn, but seven to two or so on the morning line. I think that's probably about right. I, I can't bet a horse coming out of a maiden race in the Florida Derby yeah. at those kind of odds against this kind of field. So that's the, but yeah, he could run big, but I'm not going to bet him at seven to two. Matt, is there anybody else in this Florida Derby, this big field of 11 that uh, you have your eye on on Saturday? Um, I, not necessarily that I consider a threat, but I mean, you know, there are other horses, uh, 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 that are that are worth mentioning. I think we should mention Papa Cap for uh, Mark Cassie, who had uh, you know 
shown so much promise as a two-year-old and had been doing well and then kind of kind of threw in a clunker when he finished eighth in the Risen Star. Uh, Mark Cassie, you know, has called it a head-scratcher of a race. Uh, he took him from fairgrounds to his uh, training center in Florida where he's been preparing for this race and he's looking for uh, an improved performance. Uh, I'll I'll wait to see it, but you know who's to argue with Hall of Famer Mark Cassie? Yeah, Papa Cap. You know, uh, two things. This is the track. He he's been in California and New Orleans so long. We, we might forget that this is the track where he yeah. won his debut nicely yeah. a, a, a long time ago. The son of Gun Runner. Uh, if you can draw a line through his last race, certainly he's a contender in here. Uh, given that it was his last race and it's so bad, it's not so easy to mentally draw a line through that last race. But if you can, he's got a shot. I do worry that maybe he was farther along earlier in his career and now three-year-olds as they're maturing are starting to catch up and pass Papa Cap by. Off the last race, I don't think I can bet him in here, Matt. One horse I will be betting for sure, though, 20-1 to 1 on the morning line is O-Captain, a son of Carpe Diem. I think he has a chance to seize the day on Saturday, Matt. Uh, very lightly raced for trainer Gustavo Delgado. Um, he ran early on as well. It won nicely in his debut performance. Then we didn't see him for a long time. He came back in a very fast sprint race where he was uh, well beaten third in the Limehouse Stakes after a long layoff. But then I, I like his fountain of youth. No match for simplification. But uh, two sprints, long layoff in between. And for him to come running and pass go from 11th and last to third, shows me some talent. Uh, Joel Rosario's on him here in the Florida Derby, so he's a horse I will use in my exotics. Yeah, it was. he's got an interesting uh, uh, and small set of past performances, and that uh, third place finish, that nice uh, uh, move down the stretch uh, in the Fountain of Youth is, is certainly noteworthy. Noteworthy, but is it enough to make him your top pick? Not enough to make him my top pick, Brian Zipsy. I no. am going, Who is your top pick, Matt? I am going to go with uh, simplification. I, I think he's going to get an ideal race set up in the Fountain of Youth, especially if uh, a classic causeway uh, has to battle it out a little bit on more on the front end in this race. I think Sano is going to have him in a good spot. Uh, we'll see who the favorite is, but whoever the favorite is, is certainly going to be a lukewarm favorite in this race. Right. I have come to the conclusion that simplification finally will be really, really well respected here and will be the Florida Derby favorite. I think you're on the favorite, but it won't be a heavy favorite. You'll get odds. You'll get some odds in a big field and you're going to be betting exactus. So nothing wrong with going with the favorite in this race. I think he's the horse to beat, and and you might very well be right. Sitting in the middle of the pack early might be the place to be. Simplification is the horse to beat, but I'm going to look for just a little bit better odds. You can't tell from the morning line because he's listed as a three to one second choice, but I think Wade Barrio is going to be a little bit higher than that. I think Wade Barrio is the third or fourth choice, and I think he offers some value in here because he loves the track, freshened. That little blowout work, which you know I loved, I think he can sit off of Classic Causeway just a bit and make his move. And I think he has a real good shot to beat Simplification again, run his record to four for four at Gulfstream Park. He's going to be my top pick, but certainly I have to use Simplification. And I want to throw in my long shot bomber, O Captain, a little bit as well, Matt. Hey, let's jump right over to last week's races just a bit before we call it a show. I thought Epicenter was fantastic in the Louisiana Derby match, showing a new swinging wide and winning the Louisiana Derby with absolute ease. Yeah, I agree, Brian. If there was any question about who should be the Kentucky Derby favorite right now, I think Epicenter uh, uh, took that spot away after the Louisiana Derby and look at him pulling away down the stretch and showing that new dimension uh, 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 sitting behind the pace. And like you said, Brian, when asked to run, he did just that and won impressively. We'll see after this week and the week after that, if he, if he uh, uh, ends up being the favorite 
uh, on the first Saturday in May. We'll see what happens with Forbidden Kingdom and some others. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 in fact, I wrote an article on the subject. I think Epicenter has proven his worthiness as the Kentucky Derby favorite. But on the other hand, I, I think he probably won't be come Kentucky Derby Day because I think somebody will step up, whether it be the Santa Anita Derby or the Bluegrass, especially maybe the Florida Derby. Or maybe the Philly wins the Arkansas Derby by 10 lengths. Who knows? But uh, Epicenter has done so much right now. We know we can pass horses. He's been a mile of 316. He's been a mile of consistency. Steve Asmussen has never won the Kentucky Derby. Looks like he's got a pretty good shot here with Epicenter. Uh, Echo Zulu ran the same day, Matt, and it was nothing like we've seen before from Echo Zulu. Yeah, she's still undefeated, but finally she was tested. Yes, she was tested, and we'll, you know, as we go along, we'll we'll see why, Brian. I, I think all along, uh, we felt, and 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 maybe uh, Asmussen and the connections felt that she was a little bit behind, and they were rushing a little bit to get a race in to to Echo Zulu uh, uh, heading towards the Kentucky Oaks, but. Uh, she showed her class. She showed her grit to get a victory in there. Um, the speed figures and and times and such coming out of the race don't put her head and shoulders above several of the other horses who have won uh, on the road to the Kentucky Oaks. Yeah, it, it opened the door up a little bit for the Kentucky Oaks is what it did, I think, Matt, because uh, if Secret Oath is Kentucky Derby bound and Echo Zulu is not quite the filly she was, a two, then the Kentucky Oaks suddenly becomes a much more wide open race. Echo Zulu certainly could improve. She showed her class, as you said, Matt, by winning that race, not being at her very best. But we'll have to see if she can move forward now as a three year old or if her absolute best days were a two. That was a GM Pack show, Matt. Uh, can I get a quick parting shot from you, my friend? Absolutely, Brian. This was a jam-packed show. How about next week? That's really going to be a jam-packed show also when we've got a trifecta, the final 100-point Kentucky Derby prep races. Yeah, a lot to look forward to, my friends, and we look forward to being there with you for the Wood Memorial Bluegrass Santa Anita Derby preview next week. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, Horse Racing Nation, please do so now. Thanks to our sponsor, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the terrific race graphics. And thanks to all of you for watching each week. We will be back next week right here on the Kentucky Derby Trail on Horse Center.